Hello, and welcome to episode number two of the Night's Corner Podcast. I'm your host, Aiden Eisenberg, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Nick D'Amico Ferry and Patrick Parse. I was drinking water. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm enjoying this water. <laughs> yeah? I'm really stuck on the water. I don't know why. I'm going to put it down. <laughs> got to stay hydrated. Yeah. So, it's spooky season, boys. It is spooky season. Spooky season. We're on the verge of Halloween. It's coming up fast. Yeah, it is. October flew by fast. I still have yet to get my psychology summer assignment in. And that's due <laughs> in November 11th. Why so late? I don't know. That's weird. But anyways, Spooktober is a big part of our culture nowadays with its spooky memes and skeletons and whatnot. It's also just the most beautiful time of the year. And it's the start of pumpkin spice season. It is. Pumpkin spice season started in like August. That's true. What? Some Dunkin' Donuts started using pumpkin spice stuff in like August. And I've been drinking it daily since August, so I can attest to that. No, I mean, the amount of caffeine and sugar that I drink is probably going to get to me one day well yeah it'll get to everybody but it's gonna get to your teeth first i take good care of my teeth so i'm i think i'll be fine mm. yeah, but anyways good. spooky memes are like a staple of spooktober on the internet especially places like reddit and yeah. uh instagram and the like some of them are really good some of them just are terrible yeah because yeah. people want to try to like make the next big thing yeah so they throw something together and that's what you get. They're just looking for real easy jokes to make. Just like, haha, look at this picture of a skeleton. Give me likes. Yeah. Calcium is yeah. a staple of skeletons. You gotta get your milk in. Um, man. It's just think not... it's close to the end of the year already. Yeah, it's... Oh, yes. Wait, you're talking about the actual year. I was thinking about school year. I was like, no, no yeah, we no, still got a while. Started, yeah. <laughs> no, but Everyone's like the already year. talking about prom, how, like post-prom and... Don't interrupt my show again. We're podcasting. <laughs> Do you not see the on air sign? Anyways. <laughs> 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 Anyways. Yeah, so everyone's freaking out about post prom homes. Can you not adjust your mic? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Be careful with adjusting your mic. Everyone's like freaking out about it. Like everyone's going to the Poconos. Because the there's nothing to do in the Poconos. Because super yeah, cheap houses, honestly. That's Are it. they like, cheap? Yeah, yeah they're cheap. But I like, know someone who's <clears throat> renting a house for 25 people. That That's ridiculous. It's like three grand, but they're all paying like 150 each. That's that, smart. <laughs> yeah, it's smart, but just ridiculous. Like, why? Like, yeah. What's... It's not even a big house. It's like five bedrooms, and it's like... Yeah, and they got to try to squeeze all these people. And in then there. they're like, we also got people on air matches. I'm like, what? That doesn't... No. Yeah. Why? Like, I'm trying to... Me and my friends are just trying to go down to the shore, enjoy the beach, and relax, unwind. And then straight <laughs> to the finals, because Monday... Yeah. Wait, the Monday after prom is... The Monday after prom weekend is finals. That's... Damn, been, that's going to be terrible for the kids who are drinking this. all weekend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's been like that for six years now. Six? Yes, Six. Ridiculous. Wow. Why can't they just let us have a little bit of fun? <laughs> Not even that. I just want to relax, unwind yeah. from prom. Especially, especially right after prom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got the weekend, sure. But, but like, still, you're, if you're like after prom, if you're still partying. Especially if you have important classes on the first day of... Uh, like, I have TV first, but then I have English for honors. Like, I can't miss that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Um, it's so hard to find homes, too. Because if you don't have someone who's willing to sign off on it, like an older like person, a lot of these homes are like 21 or 25 or older yeah. to rent them out, and people get like their parents or like a friend who's like older to do it. Yeah. No one in my friend group's parents are willing to do it, so we're like, great. Yeah. We're, we found a couple places, but we don't know what we're doing. Um, what are you guys doing after prom? I haven't thought about it. I was, yeah. I'm probably just gonna end up. Uh, Going to Liv's house. <laughs> just your girlfriend's house, just relaxing afterwards. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna go home and chill. Take that's a what, nap. That's what we probably did after. T- yeah, probably take a nap. When I got out of homecoming, I got home and I was like, "You tired about that? Wait until prom." Like, ugh. I just didn't go to homecoming. It was okay. I, my four years of high school, I did not go to a single homecoming. I only went to Neither homecoming because it's my senior year. 
I, do, I had to work. I don't think you were missing much. I, a lot of music that I had no clue who, what it was or who it was yeah, by. A lot of remixes. I didn't really they care. They didn't play, um, what do you call it? Uh, not Cotton Eye Joe. Um, Cupid Shuffle? No. The Cha-Cha Slide? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> what is it? It's like... The Macarena? <sighs> What's the name of it? I don't know, I don't and know nobody else can understand yeah, what you're doing. Like, you're just making <laughs> hand movements and grunting. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, my favorite, the grunt dance. Mm-hmm. Grunting. <laughs> Spin around. That's the Cotton Eye Joe. That's the Cotton Eye Joe. Is it the Cotton Eye Joe? Yeah, yes. The okay. They didn't play that, which got me. <laughs> they played a remix of it. Why? What it was so ev- bad. Everything needs to be remixed nowadays. And it's, it's horrible. It's ridiculous, yeah. They didn't well, play any good songs. Of course not. It was really bad. It, like, it was a fun night. The food was fine. Well, it's, it's, it's a school it's dance. What do you school expect? School dance, yeah. Prom food better be good. Eh. It probably won't be. <laughs> Again, school dance. I don't know. For the amount of we're paying to go to prom. And, and, well, no. It's like it's usually catered by whatever place yeah, like we wrapped yeah, in high school. Yeah. It's, well, I don't well, know where we're going for the it, dinner, actually. The dinner cruise, that food was catered by the people on the ship, and that food was subpar at best. Well, yeah, it's also a miniature yacht on the Hudson River in New York. You're also on the Hudson River. <laughs> also, like, think about how much we paid for it. It was only 85 bucks. Was it really? Yeah. I didn't go. I went to IHOP with a bunch of friends. Yeah, we know. IHOP night. IHOP night. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if, night. if the dinner cruise was catered by IHOP, I'd love it so much. That would be cool. I probably would have gone then. <laughs> uh, also it's you gotta also remember like people don't want to get seasick well it's like you're on a boat but if you don't want to get cramped s- if you don't want to get people are knocking down ce- ceiling tiles oh my god how that, many did you guys how many did they break eight eight yeah i think that's a record from what i can remember eight mm. but like if people don't want to get seasick because they eat don't eat no 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 oh, just like, in general the rocking of the boat with a bunch it was of, barely it was barely rocking was it at the beginning it was rocking I mean, I distinctly remember Nick and Akil trying to rock the boat. They were yeah. holding the railing and shaking it as hard as they yeah, can. It's, uh, it's not like an elevator where you can just jump up and down in it. Yeah, to... Me and our friend Akil, we walked up to the railing of the boat and then just took it at full force. Just... Were you at the bow or the stern? I mean, that's the same thing, actually. No. No, it's... Yeah, we're at the bow or the stern. We were... The front or the back of the boat? The back. It's not going to work. We know. I mean, in yes, bridge- it's it's been proven that the back of the boat's more shaky than the front of the boat for some yeah, odd reason. I, d- I never understood that. I think the motor. I think it's because of the like the motor. The engine. The, no, the. En- I don't know. I don't know anything about boats. I don't know the. I don't know. B- we're podcasting. Anyways, continue. Um. I don't. I don't know the anatomy of boats. <laughs> like this structure. Like I know, like that's the reason, but like. What annoyed me the most was when I went on a cruise to Bermuda over the summer. Weird flex, but okay. No, okay. no, no. Yeah, that's but fine. the issue was, the restaurant, the main restaurant on the boat, was in the back of the boat. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's a design flaw. That has to be. No. You're trying to eat Ow. food, and the waves are rocking the boat, and you're getting seasick while trying to eat? The Titanic was a design flaw. <laughs> 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 that was just poor planning. I mean, they said the boat was unsinkable, and then it, it sunk. It, it was sunk. very sinkable. I guess yeah. so. That was a design flaw. That was just. That was just a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was just there. They also didn't expect icebergs to hit them. So well, th- well, where was the captain? I don't know. Somewhere. Exactly. exactly. Not where we were supposed to be. I'm pretty sure there's a second Titanic trying to sail off. Yeah, there is. Um, it's going to be uh, sailing off soon. Is it called Titanic 2 Electric yes. Boogaloo? No, it's just called Titanic 2. <laughs> Not Electric yeah. Boogaloo, but yeah. The Olympic-class ocean liner. That's stupid. It's planned ocean linear. It's to be the exact same path Titanic originally took. Um, it, like, even into the iceberg? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Were they going to go back to the iceberg and show it who's boss? <laughs> <laughs> um, it cost $5 million. That's $5 the estimated amount. million? Dollars? Yeah, the capacity is That's only... That's like a thousand a thousand. No, it's not. The, do- the, the, <laughs> capacity, 100, the double capacity of it is only 1,680 people, and the max is like, is only 2,435. That's, yeah, that's nothing. That's the max because they want to have the same amount of lifeboats that they did on the real Titanic, so if anything bad were to happen, <laughs> they have enough. <laughs> I hope they have too. 
more than more than three. Also, twenty twenty two is okay. its maiden voyage. Okay, so like three years. Two years. I just heard about something Ish. today. Two and a half or two and a quarter. Yeah. Did you guys know about the mall that was opening up near MetLife Stadium? Yeah, the oh, American yes. Dream. The American Dream. We were discussing Never this. Heard of it. I was discussing. Yeah. Really? It's that really ugly um, mixed colored building. Yeah. That's up by, um, I forget what highway it is. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah. I think it's like, yeah, that's been under construction for so long. The like actual, po- the actual like, commercial, like, oh, shopping, like, where you can go for um, that's, shops, that's, that's opening. not opening until, like, 2024. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, they have, like, an indoor amusement park or whatever. And yeah, like, like the Mall of America. Yeah, yeah, all the entertainment stuff, like, all the big companies, like, Disney and all their parts are opening, like, within the next year and a half or so. All right. A lot of stuff opened, like, yesterday and today. Yeah, yeah. stuff opened today. It's in East Rutherford yeah. on... It doesn't say where. It's at the highways. It should... Yeah. Is it really that... It's Highway 95. Okay. Mm, okay. So it's up near um, Union City. Yeah, Clifton and Union City. is it. It's like right across from Manhattan. Gotcha. Like literally like Manhattan, yeah. the mall. Yeah. I wonder. I heard it's expensive too. Like is for it? some of this stuff, it's really expensive. I don't doubt it. I wouldn't be surprised. It's been under construction for how? who knows how long now. Over 17 years. Yeah. So October 25th was, so today that this uh, episode is being recorded on was the Nickelodeon Universe Nickelodeon Universe in Ice Rink open today. They have an ice rink? Yeah. I heard they have a ski slope too. <laughs> Why? Then November 27th, 2019 is the DreamWorks Water Park that opens up of this year. Followed by December 5th of 2019, which is the ski slope. That opens on December 5th. Ah, uh, okay. That makes Nick, sense. Nick, you want to hit the slopes? Maybe. Hell yeah. And it's not until March of 2020 does the retail store and dining open. They should open the dining, like, first. That should have been the first thing they opened. Mm-hmm. What's a mall? That's not a mall. It's an amusement park. Yeah. Well, it's an amusement park now, but once they open stores, it'll be a mall. It's with only going to have 500 plus stores, oh. which I guess that's a oh, lot. But only like, 500. Only, because that's... Because that's such a measly amount compared I don't know why to, what, I don't... 50 and maybe Freehold? Yeah, I was going to say, it sounded like a lot more in Freehold. Man, I mean... Anchor tenants? What the, what's that mean? Amusement parks are... Oh, uh, okay. So, you know those... Okay. So, like, you know those giant... Like, you know, like, uh, near East Brunswick, the, like, the giant Macy's? Yeah. Yeah. Those are anchor tenants. There's going to be six of those. Oh, my God. Huh. But isn't that, like, a normal amount? Six? Uh, yeah. Well... I mean, kind of? I'm thinking about Freehold right now. There's Lord and Taylor, Primark, uh, Nordstrom, Nordstrom, Macy's, right, Sears, or Primark and Sears are like Sears is going out of business. Don't yeah, know what you're talking about. Same, yeah. Uh, so that's five that I can think of. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna have a parking space, three thousand, thirty thousand, thirty-three thousand parking spaces. That's good. Yeah, it's good for that. You'll still never be able to find parking. But that's <laughs> yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. With the thirty three thousand, you're gonna find like two spaces. I don't know why they decided to put amusement parks in there. Like amusement parks are fun if you're going there just to. It's the new. It's the um, New Jersey version of King of Prussia. Okay. That's what I'm guessing. But like, because I've been to King of Prussia and that place is huge. Yeah. But like, why? Like, what's the appeal to having an amusement park in a mall? Like amusement parks are. Like, if you're going to an amusement park as, like... Maybe it's separated? I'd hope it's separated. Yeah. It's like the water slide in the middle of, like, the shopping district. Like, what? I think in the Mall of America, like, their Nickelodeon-themed amusement park is literally, like, in the middle of the mall, and you can see people, like, shopping around you. That, That's kind of cool. I mean, yeah, but, but like... like I feel, at least I think. I'm not sure. I feel bad for the people that have to work those rides, because, like, working rides is not fun. No, yeah, you had experience, right? Yeah. At uh, Six Flags? Keensburg. Keensburg. Whatever, mm. same place. No, not even close. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, right. So, King of Prussia. Where is King of Prussia? It's in um, Pennsylvania. Okay. It's like its own little district. Oh? Yeah, it's that big. It's like really tiny. That is tiny. Yeah, it's very small. Um, it has... Where is it? Stores, 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 stores. 
Hmm. Oh, they have a Crayola store in the Mall of America. They have a Crayola store? Yeah, I think I went to a Crayola factory when I was a lot younger. That's pretty cool, I think. I always wanted to go to, like, the Crayola factory, but just never... Yeah, I always liked the idea of free food. That's why I wanted to go to the Crayola factory. <laughs> Eat crayons. Eat the crayons. Uh, Where is the giant Mansley? <laughs> can I just get in it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys like the Iron Giant? That's that. The, where is the robot Mansley? Where is the giant? <laughs> it's right in front of us. <laughs> Oh, I'm wrong. The Nick theme park is separated. Wow, that's yeah. ridiculous. So I was guessing. Wouldn't it be a lot of fun if you were just like on a swing ride like they have at a like Sky Screamer and just like there were people shopping under you? <laughs> <laughs> but like also think about how many kids would like go on that ride just to drop things on people. <laughs> I would do that. I'd kick my shoes off. <laughs> oh, so wait. King of Prussia has sh- less than the American Dream Mall. Really? King of Prussia only has 394 stores. Only. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, compared to the super malls, like, King yeah. of Prussia sounds smaller than the American Dream. King yeah. of Prussia is anchored by Nordstrom, Macy's, Neiman, Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Lord & Taylor, Dick's Sporting Goods, and Primark. That's another one. There's a Dick's Sporting Goods and Freehold. Mm. But it's not anchored. It's separated. It's close it. enough. It's like yeah. right across. It's like across the parking lot. It's basically like saying the AMC is in f- is in the Freehold Mall. It's not, but it's right there. Yeah. And anchored mo- an anchor is like it's attached to the building. It's yeah. anchored with it. But um, going back to what you said about the swing ride, that having experience running rides like that, that is mm-hmm. a fun run to ride. Really? Fun ride to run, yeah. I, I know English. Just watching people spin around in a circle, yelling. Well, if if somebody's doing something wrong, you get to yell at them, and that's fun. Yeah. What could you do wrong? That's that like take off your harness and fly um, out? No, it's not a it's not a harness. It's just a it's just a hook that goes onto a metal bar that straps around the seat that anybody can take off. Yeah. But like. That's not very safe. Oh, it's not. But like that might just be the amusement park that I came from. Yeah, but, like, but also, it, it doesn't have to be all that safe, because, like, it's safe enough where you won't fall out of it, Yeah, and no reasonable person will, like, get on the ride and then take off their harness. You don't know that. I've had, I had a kid get on a ride, sit down, I had him fully strapped in, the ride starts going up, he takes everything off, I have to bring it back down. <laughs> That's gotta be annoying. He took everything off, except for the, uh, restraint <clears throat> that they have that goes over your shoulders, because it locks. So he couldn't get that off, but he took, there's a seatbelt that goes up the middle. He took that off. There's a seatbelt that goes around your waist. He took that off. Ah, so he's a jumper. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a whole bunch horrible. of parents yelling at me to stop the ride. I already saw it and I had the ride stopped already, but like. Mm. How high up were they? Not, like the ride was just getting ready. So like not even three feet off the ground. Um, no, it was, yeah, maybe like three feet. That's not bad. Yeah. But, but still, that's a hazard. Well, yeah. Rides like that should have automatic, like, detection systems to, like, where it stops it immediately. Like, that they, like We're exactly. talking about Keensburg. Yeah, we're but talking about Keensburg. Still, safety is, like, key. I'm pretty sure Six Flags does that, where it's, like, you can't start the ride until all of the harnesses are locked. There, Even the one's not occupied. There's one ride at Keensburg that did that. Which one? It's called Pharaoh's Fury. It's that boat one that goes back and forth. Oh, like, those! Th- I hate mm. those things. Yeah, I that, mean, I just hate amusement parks in general. So yeah, that's the that's the only ride in that park that's like unless every single chair, every single bench, or like lap bench is down, it won't it, go. Yeah, or they have the uh, double shot unless all the seats are locked properly. What is that double shot? It's a big tower with seats going all the way around. You strap yourself in. Oh, is it one? Oh, yeah. And, and, and it ones? shoots it all the way up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's so something the, like that. Yeah, the, uh, the tower drop ones, basically, yeah. but not in, it's not like in a tower. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Museum parks are just, I remember going to like Six Flags and stuff for band competitions back in elementary, middle school. Those were mediocre at best. I'm, Whenever I would go to an amusement park, either it was for camp or, like, some other trip, I was the designated bag holder for everyone. <laughs> All right, what, guys, do you not like rides? Just, no, I don't. I'm terrified of rides. I don't like rides either. No. <sighs> really? I, I almost got on, park. um, what's the skull ride? Skull in, Mountain. Skull Mountain in 
Six Flags, right? Mm-hmm. And I went, I, like, scooted into the seat. Didn't sit down, just went all the way through, just going, nope, 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 nope. Because I was online, I'm like, yeah, I want to do this, I want to do this. Got there, nope, just scooted right through, went to that exit, and I was just like, yeah, no. Skull Mountain's a pretty easy ride, though. That's what I've heard. I just don't like rides. People are like, oh, you should do Nitro as your first one. But I heard, I've no. seen Nitro, I'm like, no, no, no. No, Nitro is not a good one to start with. Like, if you're terrified of rides, going on Nitro the first time, you're going to, like, you're going to be scared. Like, Though I hate roller coasters, I love water slides. I, uh, I'm the opposite. Because I had a bad experience on a water slide once. When I was little, uh, we, me and my cousins were in LBI. And I remember going on down it with him. And he was uh, heavier than me. Like, a lot bigger. So he sat in the, f- like, in the front of the tube. Right, for faster velocity. Yeah, so he was like, we're going to go faster if I sit in the front. And I'm like, that's fine, you know. Whatever you want to do, Joe. Flip. We almost we are going down, and then it's like there's a steep <laughs> drop, and then all of a sudden I feel like my side of the slide, the like my tube, like lift, and I'm like not touching the ground at all, and I like fall on top of my cousin, and I'm just like holding on to him. I was so scared. I would be. Yeah. Why does that remind me of the video of like the little kids getting stuck on the water slide? Those are so and funny. Yelling, and then they're like. They have to be no older than, like, 12 or something. And they're, like, cursing their mouths off. I'm like, what is this video? I don't understand how kids can just do that. I want Action Park to reopen. That was a whole... (laughs) God. Action Park. Action Park. Oh, my God. That was a... An entire thing was a liability. It was one big liability. Yeah. My dad went to Action Park, like, before it, like, closed and then reopened and it was, like, safer... Didn't Apparently. someone die? Didn't multiple people die at yeah. Action Park? Yeah. A lot of injuries and a lot of, uh, not a lot of deaths, but a, a couple. <laughs> a couple. Still more than, more than what it should be. That's more, yeah. yeah th- th- well, it should, it should be, be zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what, there's no amusement yeah, if there's not a little bit of risk involved. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's what thrill rides are for. That's what all the precautions and being strapped down with 20 different measures are for. But is it real risk if you know how safe it is? <laughs> Kids are kind of like one or two restrictions on a ride. That's it. I mean, e- as long as you have that safety, that placebo effect of mentality. Yeah. Where it's like, all right, I'm strapped in. Nothing bad is going to happen. Yeah, but like some of the, f- like a really bad thing about one of the rides is you, at Kingsburg, you can't stop the ride unless something major happens. Like my manager was training me on the one ride and she goes... Don't stop this ride unless somebody's like dead. What? What ride was it? That same that same boat ride. Really? Yeah. If you just how did you die on that? Uh, you can slide underneath the <gasps> the. Oh my god! Bar. Yeah. That's why. It's such a design flaw. That's what it's tech. That's why it's not meant for kids that are scared or anything because they'll easily just. And that's why good was, point, and it goes at like a ninety degree angle at some points. And that's why it's like that's why there's height restrictions. Yeah, good yeah. Point. And you like, must be this tall to ride. But like she even said, like because like there's a pedal to start the ride. Right. That and she goes, if you take your foot up off that pedal, the ride will break. What? Because is it because the wheel like that's pushing the ride will stop? It'll just stop and. The ride still has all that momentum going forward. And it's still going to go back and forth. Yeah, but there's nothing pushing it. So it's rubbing up against... Rubber. Yeah, just straight rubber. It's not moving it, anything. Because those wheels lock. Right. So it's it's going, but it's going like this and trying to push. I oh, hit okay. my mic. Yeah. But like... So it's it's like it's the friction that causes it just sort of causes it to just like, and another thing it's that an could, abrupt stop. Yeah, yeah. And another thing that could be bad with that ride, the wind. If the wind is blowing this way, because the ride is like the ride is horizontal. So say so say the ride's heading west and the wind's coming from the east. No, if the if the wind is going east and west, and the ride's going north and south. No, the no. <laughs> no, the, ride, the ride will always go. Say you're. Say you're facing west. Yes. No, west is this way. Say you're facing... Yeah, I'm just saying. Say let, you're facing... Let him explain, Aiden. <laughs> say you're facing north. Okay. You're looking past the ride. Right. And the ride is horizontal. Okay. In length. If the wind is coming 
at you or from behind you, that ride cannot run. It, the wind will push the ride back and forth this way, vertical, long ways, this way. Instead of... Instead of oh, the other way, because... So if it's, like, hitting against the long side of the ride, it could, like, push it in a way it's not supposed to go. Yes, and it'll push it into the steel support beams and the exit gate on the other side or towards the operator. Okay. All I'm learning is that Keensburg is scary. <laughs> it's... It's a good first job. Okay. Like, if you're a 16, 17-year-old kid that needs some quick Our money. Are kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that adorable? But, could, if, you, if you're a 16, 17-year-old kid that needs a first job, nobody's hiring you. You can Kingsburg. go there. You can... Not, I'm not saying, like, Kingsburg, go. Yeah. But it's like, if you're looking for something quick and you have availability they'll schedule you right speaking of jobs who are hiring if you want a job at mj's my manager told me that we really need people bad and he begged me to get people to did he really he didn't beg me but it was more like so pat you know how you said you were gonna like talk to some people and like ask them to come work here well now's the time where i really need them because like how short staffed are you there was one kid who was bussing, and he basically pulled most of the bus boys' weight because he was working like six days a week. Oh. And then he got fired. What? Yeah. Why did you fire somebody like that? Because he uh did not show up for his shift. And once. Yeah. Yeah. Like once. Like that's like that's ridiculous. It's a like at most that should be a write up, and yeah. I'm not gonna trash on the management. Not even a write up. Days. That should just be like a like a slap on the wrist, the misdemeanor. Yeah. Like, why didn't you show up? If you had a legitimate reason for it, yeah, but, like, yeah, but if he just was lazy and was like, I'm not going to go into work today. Even but then, if you're working you six be, days if you're working six days a if week. If you're carrying most of the team and you get fired, it's like firing the best person on your team. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I was one of the busboys, but I started food running in the mornings because we were missing a morning food runner. And that kid picked up all of my shifts, so now I can't stop food running in the mornings. But then also, like... Who's gonna bus at night? Right. Mm. So I'm, basically, if you if you want a first job or you've bussed before, come work at MJ's. Yeah. Also, Coles is hiring too. Like, I got an when I got hired, I immediately got an email after tell, like saying like, tell your friends that we're still looking for people. Yeah, my mom worked in retail for a while. She's like, I'm, you're not allowed to work in retail. I go, it, why? She's like, it's horrible. It's bad. I'm like, okay. It, it honestly depends on where you're going. I just don't have a desire to work in retail or food services. I mean, I worked in Burger King over the summer for like a week and a half, then quit because they weren't training me. <laughs> they were like, all right, sit down, do these videos, and then, all right, you're in. I'm like, but I, like, the, eh, eh. Someone needs to teach me how to do my job properly. <laughs> yeah, not some video where it's like I sit there and, like, do like zone out for like an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was getting paid, so, like, yeah, by so the time I quit, I made, like, what, like $250? Nobody teaches you how to handle customers, no. which is one thing that I noticed. Uh, it, you can't really like react. You can't talk to customers the same way you would talk to like a friend, a friend you know? Yeah. So it's like you can't be too friendly. You have to have some sort of like prof not even professionality, professional, but it's like you have to be like almost too nice to the point that people are annoyed. Yeah. Uh, I was ta I was dropping off uh, some food for people at MJ's, and uh, they were just sitting down, and I was, like, handing out their food, and then I was like, could I get you guys anything else? And then the lady, like, turns around, and she's like, no, I think we'll be fine. And I was like, I'm just trying to be nice. I'm doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's when the customer yells at you, and it's like, there's, not your fault. You're there's just like, always people like that anywhere yeah. you go. The, the, like, the two days before I quit... I, like, uh, left, we were sitting there, and, like, I was standing, I was in the back, and I'm uh, dropping fries, dropping onion rings, because that's the only thing I could do. I was, like, the only proficient thing was dropping fries, making fries, making onion rings. Really? Yeah, like, putting things in, like, the, uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, I was, like, basically cooking all the food. I'm but surprised I it didn't put you at a register first. She, the manager was, she was, like, I don't want you on there, because, like, we have people for it. Okay. And she was, like, but... Um, she was like, okay, so I was just sort of, she's like, 
I just got thrown in there. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to go do something that I think I could do. And I got really good at it. But I'm like, this is like, then I got put on the night shift. I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> you got put on the night shift as a 17-year-old. Exactly. I'm like, that's like the worst thing. And I even told him there's like a restriction for me to drive past yeah. 1101. They could give you a note. And they that's could, what, and that's like, what my manager did because yeah, I would be there until tell. 12. She, I would be scheduled until like maybe 12, some nights on like a Friday. So I had to get the note, but my manager, she was, she had no issue giving me the note. Yeah, but I knew that I would be taking high level classes in this year, so I was really not looking forward to working night shifts and having to go home and do a bunch of AP work. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you probably could have talked it out with your manager that like it I wouldn't be available. Have, but like again, yeah. I wasn't being trained, and I got really annoyed. And also, the night manager kind of creeped me out. So I like <laughs> <laughs> nothing I'm better like, than that creepy <laughs> manager. <laughs> But anyways, so I was, like, in the back, like, dropping fries or whatever, and this guy just started yelling at the cashier, who, and then I'm just sort of standing there. I'm walking back in. No, I was on break. Just standing there watching. <laughs> I turned around, and the guy's looking, like, you can't even make a good sandwich, and he threw it on the floor and just went everywhere. That's so, that's. No, I wasn't on lunch breaks. I was filling up the Coca-Cola machine uh, with, like, the ice bucket, which is, like, A, like, like, three feet taller than me, so I was lifting with the... Bare minimum strength I have, like a bucket of ice <laughs> over my head. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It sucked, and he threw it on the ground. And I look up at the cat. He storms out. I kind of got scared that he was going to come back or something. I was like, he's going to come back. He's going to come back and find the person who made that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I'm like really scared. And it like went over all the floor. And I sort of just look up, and the cashier is like, can you get a broom, please, and like clean that up? I'm like, yeah, I'll you're do that. You're lucky that you had to clean up food. Mm. I was not ready to do bathroom duty either. No, That's why I want to work at like PetSmart or Petco where there's animals. And it's oh, so you can, yeah, and you can clean animal. I mean, I already Jesus. do that at home. Well, yeah, I have, but I have a dog, a bird, a cat, a snake. Like, what else can I have that won't be out of place? Fair. Well, you could have dozens of cats, birds, and snakes. That I you're mean, I'd be surrounded of. by animals the entire time, so have, I'm fine with that. You could get a ferret. I want a ferret so bad. Like, can, we get a, can we get a podcast ferret? <laughs> they're like spaghetti rats. <laughs> <laughs> Just the podcast ferret. Nightly the podcast ferret. <laughs> Nightly the podcast ferret. Squishy. Yeah. I have so many videos of ferrets on TikTok. <laughs> like, just saved. <laughs> they're a, I love them they're so much. They're cute, but like... They're like... They're messy. They're messy and... Um, mean. <laughs> yeah, if they get like... They're mean. If you they don't... can get very, like, their intestine, their, like, in intestinal tract get very clogged up very quickly and easily because of how small they are, like, how thin they are. It's very thin, that, that tract that, like, food travels through. <laughs> it's Murr from Impractical Jokers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, like, one minute the ferret's fine, and then the next minute it can't <laughs> do anything. <laughs> Do you think a ferret has ever tied themselves into a knot? Definitely. <laughs> Snakes do it all the time. My snake does it all the time. Ties himself into a knot. My but it's not like a tight knot. Like, you can get out of it. Ferret just rolls around like the Chef Boyardee can when Bob says, I can't have it. Remember those commercials? Man, I miss it was... commercials like that. Oh. Yeah. Man, don't... Now it's all like, what, Fortnite dancing? Yeah, now it's just a bunch of Fortnite and like, that's it. <laughs> It, it's just a whole bunch of, like, really generic, like, pop jingles that I just don't like. It's not good. Mm. Bring My, me back to the early 2000s. Oh. The only commercial that I like now, it's not even a commercial, it's just an advertisement that came up for Pepto-Bismol <laughs> <laughs> in December last year, and it's just a gingerbread man singing. <laughs> it's not even funny. It's so stupid, but I love it. That's... That's <laughs> all those old commercials are just so good to just go back and look at. Right, yeah. Like those are my f absolute favorites. I loved the uh commercial where uh it was like this wrestler <laughs> and a kid drinking Sprite. And then the wrestler just like I want to spike cranberry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I can't thing I'm looking forward I to. think it was a soda commercial. All I remember is that this kid's like uh, his favorite wrestler, like, comes to his house, and then the wrestler just, like, 
demolishes demolishes him. Yeah, like he picks him up and he slides him just across the takes banister. The kid out. He like runs him across the banister and he takes out all of their like family pictures and everything. And then he throws him. And I'm like, wow. And this is for this a is... soda commercial. Uh, yeah, it's a soda commercial. What? That's... Yeah. <laughs> Sprite cranberry is one thing, but that's another. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna do the same thing again? What the Sprite Cranberry what, thing? Sprite Cranberry. Yeah, because it, it they ha- a, they always do it. Yeah, that was genuinely a good commercial in my opinion. It was always it was a good commercial. Then became a great meme for like the rest of December. Yeah, it's the thirst thirstiest time <laughs> of, of the year. year. D- Speaking of Christmas, all I want for all I want for Christmas is you is on the rise again. It oh, I started, know, and I and I love it. It's October. It's almost Christmas. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. I don't care. I, as soon as November first hits, it's Christmas music. No. And then I and then it lasts until, like. <laughs> what? Pat just showed me the gingerbread man Pepto Bismol. That's great. That is amazing. Uh. And like, but like yeah, once November first hits, it's like full fledged. Like I'm all go on Christmas. The um, what do you call it? The uh. Like the landscaping store that's down the road from the high school yeah. already has Christmas decorations up. Coles has Christmas stuff up. Well, yeah, because that's they get the product, they get all their shipments in, and it's like, well, we got to get all this stuff up before the holiday season. A lot of WalMarts have Christmas stuff up already. Costco probably has a bunch of decorations yeah. up already. I haven't been. Walmart in a while. has a section dedicated to Halloween and a section already dedicated to Christmas. I knew about the Halloween section, but yeah. Well, that makes sense because it's timely, but like right. Like, I don't understand why there needs to be... Like, I love Christmas, but... Who doesn't love Christmas? Jews. I love Christmas, and I'm Jewish. I you're forgot that Jew. you're Jewish. You're half Jewish. <laughs> yeah, but still. Do you yeah. celebrate both? Yes. Well, then, you can't say anything. I'm talking about, like, 100%... What, Orthodox like, Jews? I'm full, not... I'm not Full-fledged full, full, I'm, I'm talking about yeah, full-fledged... Yeah, the Orthodox. Okay, well... You want to know what uh, what uh, holiday always su- never made sense? Kwanzaa. Yeah, I don't get it. Is uh, what is? Let's look this up. What is Kwanzaa? I remember it's, there was I, a Blues Clues episode about. There Kwanzaa. was a Blues there was Clues a episode. Blues clu- yeah. What is Kwanzaa? Kwanzaa. It's spelled like K W A N Z Z. K W A N Z A A. Why does it? I thought there was two Z's. A select Plans. festival observed by many African Americans from December 26th to January 1st as a celebration of their cultural heritage and traditional values. But it's not even like a real, like, recognized holiday. I mean, I don't know. I've never celebrated it, mostly because I'm not African American. Yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah. Is Kwanzaa nationally. Is Kwanzaa a national holiday? Although Kwanzaa is not a public holiday, businesses and schools may be closed because it falls on the same days as. Date as day after Christmas Day in 2019, which is a public holiday in four states. Day after Christmas Day. Never you mean, heard of that. You mean post Christmas? You mean little Boxing Christmas Day? What? Boxing Day in That's Canada. Canada. Yeah, but like still. I guess. I mean, I I was born on a little Christmas, January 6th. The why? Why does there need to be like? Because because little... according to Christianity, that was the day the three kings came to baby Jesus was January 6th. Well, Jesus was technically born in March, so. What? Yeah. My CCD teacher told me and my class, Jesus was born in March, not on Christmas. I'm going to have to fact check your CCD teacher real quick. <laughs> she she legitimately told us, she was like, you guys do know that Jesus wasn't born on Christmas, right? He was born in like March. Like March like 24th. Then where did the October 25th come from with... October 25th? I mean... De- December 25th. December 25th come from? I don't know. They must have just... They must not have known. Like, Until December? I don't... A whole two months later? No, <laughs> they didn't know that he was born. <laughs> no, like... They must not have, like, known the exact date, because who would? But, like... Good point. So, like, they probably just... Yeah, I found probably. something. Okay. So... They say that uh, he was most likely born late August or September. I heard March. Yeah. But that it, Again, it's the Bible, and it was written how long ago? Who knows? Forever. Forever ago. Eons. <laughs> and then there's another thing where it says the 25th of March, and then the 25th of December. So, who knows? Uh, 
it's all really just turns into a big game of telephone at that point of like what I mean I don't think anybody's playing a game of telephone where it's like when was Jesus born <laughs> but like you know it's, it's been always... going on for 2000 years already so yeah I'd say about 2000 years so an eon how long is an eon an eon goes back to the greek aeon which means age and aeon. age is not easy to measure and neither is an eon. Both are just really a long period of time. But in science, an eon is about a billion years. It took you an eon to explain that. Am I right? Ba-dum-tsh. Ayo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. That was fine. <laughs> when was the Bible written? I'd, s- I'd say like sometime b- after Jesus was born. No, before. What do you mean? About, <laughs> between so. about 1200 and 165 BC. BC, before Christ. Are those the Old Testaments? Yes. And then the Old was... Testament, the New Testament book were written by Christians in the first century AD. Yeah, so. So, yeah, okay, that I get. That's not a billion years, though. Yeah, but, you know. It's like a couple hundred thousand, probably. I don't understand how they, like, measure that, though. Like, No, yeah, I was in art history, in AP art history, I was sort of just sitting there. I'm looking at, like, the way how it's all, like, numbered. And it's, like, it's like starts off larger, and then the number, it's, like, from large number to small number. I'm, like, wait, so, like. Yeah, it counts down. It counts down, and now we're counting back up. So, like, when was, like, zero? Like, There's no year zero. Year, but that doesn't make sense. What, did it go down to one, then what, to, like, no, it just, two? No, it goes from... From BC right into the year 1 AD and then up. That's why, like, 2020 is not the turn of the century. The century. The, the turn decade. of the century is 20. The turn of the century is 20, uh, 2021, isn't it? It's a decade, but yeah, it's the. It's the turn of the decade is 2021 because there's no year zero. Right. So it's. And the next century won't be until 2100. Then uh, we won't be in the 22nd century until. 2101. Year. Yeah, 2101. No, 2100. No, because, again, no year zero, so it's year one, so it's that hundred after. So it would be from 2000. Oh, yeah, I'm wrong. Sorry. January 1st, 2021. 21, 2101. Yeah. Jeez, we won't be alive for that. No. Unless Who find, says? Unless they find some, like, immortality Within thing, the which next, would be like, cool. what, 80 years? 60, yeah. 50 years? If they find some way for people to become immortal, I want it. If I can become a robot with my human brain, that'd be fine. I I think they already like. If I can like, become like um, Futurama President Nixon with the, the head, head in a jar, jar. <laughs> with the <laughs> robot body. How's the family, Morbo? <laughs> with the headless body of my Vice President <laughs> Spiro Agnew. <laughs> That's a great show. Yeah. Is Nixon... Nixon's not alive. No. No. When did Nixon die? 2004. Did he really? I don't know. I was about to say, that's a pretty good number that you just pulled out. I would have believed you without any sort of... If it's 2004, I, I'll be surprised. That 1994. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> Ten years off. So close. Yeah. Whatever. April 22nd, 1994 to be exact. Okay. Um, I put Rich. Rich? I put it. Richie Nixon. It was. I put when did Young Rick R I C and it. The first thing is when did Rick James die? August six two thousand and four. Oh, I got oh, very scared for him. I'm like that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm like Rick James. Oh god. That. Wow. No. Imagine if it actually was two thousand four. He would have lived. When? Okay. When was Richard Nixon born? When would? When did Richard Nixon born? When, when was when did Richard Nixon born? You're lucky I was yawning. I would have roasted you. <laughs> so, January twentieth, nineteen sixty nine to August ninth, nineteen seventy four. Oh wait, no. When was he president? That was not what I was looking at. Um. Just go to wait. Wikipedia. Yeah. Wait, January. 69 to 74? How old is How long is that? 69 to 74 is just his presidential term, wasn't it? Because he, he died in 94. 10 years? He served for 10? That doesn't make sense. No, he didn't. But 69 to 74, that's five years. Yeah. I did 74 minus 69, and I got 10. 
I did something wrong. <laughs> That's just not Yeah, correct. you did something wrong. 74 minus 69 is... Wait, is your calculator Wait, in degree 70, mode? 79 minus 64, I... I 15. <laughs> Where is his... Okay, birthday? he was born in 1913. 19... Richard Nixon was not born in 1913. Richard Nixon... Richard Milhouse Nixon, born January 9th, 1913, died April 22nd, 1994. At the age of? 81. The okay. math works out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. If not. he had died in 2004, that would make him... 90-something. Yeah, 90 around... No. Yeah. Yeah. It would make him... 91. 91. He would be 91. Okay. Still good life. He was close to, turn, he was close to the turning of the 21st century. Okay. He was well, a little bit off. You know what? Good life. Yeah. I mean, not really because Watergate, but... Mm. Well, still, you know. I mean, he was a commander in the U.S. Navy. He uh, fought in World War II. I forgot he fought in World War II. Yeah. I forgot a lot of our presidents fought in, like, wars. Like, um, I'm pretty sure Kennedy fought as a pilot in the Navy. Yeah. Um, of course, all the war presidents we had. God. There was a documentary that came out about that. Was there? Yeah. Uh you wouldn't think that Richard Nixon served in the U.S. Navy. You wouldn't, yeah, no. No, especially as a commander, yeah. which is, like, the rank of, like, probably, I'm trying, ah, uh, military history, uh, my knowledge. I want to say that's, like, a captain or something. Don't hurt yourself, Aiden. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we got we to gotta give you around for, like, a couple more episodes. <laughs> cool. and drink, then we, drink some water. You'll be okay. And then we can replace you with our guest from last week, Brett Allen. Brett, yeah. I like Brett. Brett I was miss- a good. Brett was a good guest. I'm. I'm. Honestly, I'm gonna say it. I miss the guest. Like it's just like I know it's nice to just have us, but I okay, like having it's the a new same face. as the lieutenant colonel. What? It's a commander in the navy is the same as a lieutenant colonel in any, every other branch of the military. Oh, so like Mister Doolittle. <laughs> you mean Colonel? I, I, he's Mr. Doolittle to me. Good morning, Colonel. Colonel. The only uh, Colonel I care about. Colonel is, Sanders? Is Mr. Sanders. Okay. There, Nick, you're going to get some KFC after the this? New, Maybe. The new director of AFJRTC is Colonel Sanders. Are you, really? His yeah. name is Colonel Sanders. <laughs> that's that's definitely That was definitely planned. That's so unfortunate. That's a, that's a big meme I'm going to say, no, it probably was not intentional, but that's unfortunate. I, I feel some... like his main goal in life was just to get to that rank just for that joke. And then he could retire and be an ROTC t- uh, teacher. Instructor? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. How much experience do you need to be to be an ROTC instructor? None. I don't know. You just have to wear a uniform. Do you think that's common knowledge? No. Among regular people? No. Probably not. How much military experience? I would expect you would have to be in the military for a little while to just be an instructor. You, you have to have some bearing. Like, I feel like you have to be, like, a higher-ranking officer, at least. Yeah, like, um, so our main instructor, Colonel, is a retired lieutenant colonel. And our uh, other instructor is a chief master sergeant, retired. They um, just strung a whole bunch of words together, and that's how they make ranks. <laughs> okay, so f- the qualifications for an ROTC instructor... They must have a minimum of a bachelor's degree in the field related to the subject that they teach. So aerospace science and um, leadership education. And they must also have a minimum of 20 years of active duty. So they're probably going to be around like a master sergeant or like some sort of sergeant and or a lieutenant or captain or higher. And have, I know there's... Could you stay a private for 20 years? You could. You can... You can be, there's a whole meme within the military that you stay as an e uh, in the fourth rank of an enlisted member for like the rest of your entire military career, known as the E4 Mafia, because you just never get ranked up because you just aren't doing your job. Another mm. thing with the instructor qualifications, you have to have had already applied for retirement within the last six months or have been retired for less than five years. Yeah, one of our before we got our current chief, ma- our current chief, Chief Kilpatrick, um, we were gonna get uh. They're all from the same unit. So Colonel Doolittle and Chief Kilpatrick are both from the 108th Air uh, uh, Reserve 
refueling wing. So they flew giant planes and refueled planes in the air. Uh, we are going to get another one, uh, one of the other uh, chiefs from that unit, um, Chief Sylvester, same rank as the current our current chief, but he and re-enlisted. So we, so he didn't because he, yeah, he didn't join because he uh, re-enlisted. So, but like it's very interesting, like the whole process of doing that because like you have to go through like interviews with like the school staff and whatever. I remember like last year when chief had joined it was like the year before that our the chief that was originally here retired my freshman year so sophomore year we never had a second instructor it was just colonel and it was very stressful because he had to do all the paperwork it was a lot yeah. that takes out of from having a second um partner basically and that's what muscon is for <laughs> okay yeah well like the cats <laughs> also yeah like muscon and robert and uh jess and Zoha and Fiona, they're all sort of work in tandem, not only with Colonel Chief, but with the rest of us. Yeah. Or their lackeys. Yeah. Um, God. Uh, Can we get Bobby Davis on the podcast? He has spoken to me multiple times about joining, like coming on, and I'm. I'll have him on. I don't care. Yeah, I'll have him He's on. He's cool. You know, I'm all for Bobby. Yeah, we can. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. enlisting. Bobby, if you're listening to this, jo- come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. We'll let you on the podcast, Bobby. God damn it, Bobby. God damn God it, Bobby. Damn it Bobby. Bobby. I sell propane and propane accessories. Do I look like I know <laughs> what a JPEG <laughs> is? <laughs> I just want a picture of a goddamn hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Second straight podcast episode with impressions. Uh, I'm okay, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pocket sand. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Gribble is the most relatable person on that show. Yes. <laughs> His Can fear of the government <laughs> revels my own. <laughs> Pocket sand. Bobby, open the door. <laughs> my God. Oh, uh, this show is so good. Uh, well, I think we should end it here. Yeah, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. So. Thank you for tuning in. My yep. name is Aiden Eisenberg. I'm Nick D'Amico Ferry. And I'm Patrick Parks. And you can listen to this episode coming out soon on SoundCloud. Links will be provided on social media. And have a great day for whenever you're listening to this. Goodbye.